ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय Srila Prabhupada begins the third one by giving an example which he many times gave, how the ear is the most important sense. Often people say, can you show me God? But Srila Prabhupada always used to say that you have to see by hearing that is mentioned in the third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam the Shutekshana Pantha Shutekshana Pantha the path of seeing by hearing you can see not exactly by seeing with your eyes but by hearing just like if you go in the science laboratory and you see some test tubes and some Bunsen burners and flasks and different chemicals reacting. You can see it, but you won't understand what it is unless someone explains to you. So, seeing, factual seeing means not simply the impression of objects which are recorded on the retina and perceived by the apparatus of the brain, but real seeing means by understanding. Now this example Prabhupada gives, another example of how hearing is more important than seeing, is how the ear is the sense by which we perceive in sleep. It is the most alert sense. In sleep our senses, our external senses, they become asleep also. But the ear is the sense which can first uh, perceive. If there is a robber in the house, we may, if we're asleep at night, we won't, we're not so likely to see him, but we're more likely to hear him. Or if we are to be woken up, there are two ways. One, one, well, there are different ways. You can turn on the light that wakes up some people, not our brahmacharyas anyone. <laughs> uh, you can shake them. Or you can call out. Usually from a distance, someone will call out. So this calling out, get up. That is more effective than seeing. So, Jeev Jago, Jeev Jago, Gaura Chanda Bhalai, Koto Nidra Jao Maya Pisha Chira Kove. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Gaura Chanda, is calling out to the sleeping souls, wake up, wake up. How long will you sleep on the lap of the witch called Maya? So, having called them and woken them up, then he gives information, not simply call to wake up, but giving information. Inetji Osho Dhimaya Nashibara Ragi Harinama Maha Mantra Lao Tumimaya. He says that I've brought the medicine which will destroy the disease of material life. That is called Harinam. So you should take it. So in this way, hearing is most important because everyone in this Hearing about Krishna specifically is important because everyone in material life is suffering from shok, moha, and bhai. Means lamentation, fear, uh, shok, lamentation, illusion, and fear. And there are so many sufferings. Lamentation, illusion, and fear. This is just a summary. But there are so many different kinds of sufferings. Hunger, thirst, exhaustion, old age, unfulfilled desires, that is, uh, the lamentation is, the different kinds of lamentation. These are called uh, desire for something which one wants to achieve but has not, and lamenting for that which he had but has lost. Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma Nasho Chati Nakang Chati 
a self-realized person, he neither shoch na sochati. He does not lament for that which he has lost, and na kamchati. He does not desire anything else. So everyone in the material world is lamenting for what they lost. Oh, when I was a child, I was so happy. Or an old woman will look in the mirror and think, how I lost my youth. So they lamented. I had so much money. I lost my mother. Always we're lamenting for what we have lost. And we're thinking, if only I could get something else, I could improve my situation in future. If I got more money, or if I went to America, or if I went to the beauty parlor and made my body more beautiful, in this way I would be... There are so many different desires, unlimited desires. When we become the servant of Maya, then we have so many material desires. As long as we are in Krishna consciousness, there is only one desire, that is to serve Krishna. Of course that desire may be manifested in different ways, but the material desires, they are unlimited. Unlimited material desires. One simply leads to another. So one is never satisfied. It's just like in the Puranas it is stated, sometimes there are different demons with more than one head. So if the head is chopped off, another ten heads come in its place. So in the same way, we may try to satisfy material desires, but in the course of so-called satisfying them, more and more material desires come. It is like, like an uncontrollable disease that you know, all the germs, they multiply one after another, one after another. So these are, these uh, lamentation, fear, fear is basic condition of material life. Everyone is afraid of death. Within our hearts, there is always the strong fear of death. So shoka, moha, there is illusion. I am this body. Actually, all, all these illusions come from attachment to the body. Because we are thinking, I am this body. Therefore we lament. Therefore we desire. Therefore we are in illusion. Therefore we fear. Because we are thinking we are the body. So by hearing the message of Krishna, we become free from this. The first teaching that Krishna gives is you are not this body. When we remove the illusion that we are this body, then we can die. We can face death peacefully. Prabhupada said that... Srila Prabhupada said that uh, Socrates was a self-realized person. Not that he was a great devotee, he wasn't that he had no knowledge of Krishna, but he was self-realized because he was not afraid of death. He knew he was not the body. Therefore he was willing to accept death without fear. He knew he was not the body. So even, even by, for a very intelligent person, a very discriminating person, uh, even by logical analysis he can understand they are not the body. And Krishna gives this information in Bhagavad Gita. He gives an he gives an example by he gives more than one example by which we can understand that we are not the body. The example that Krishna gives is that the body is always changing from childhood to youth to old age, and the, the mind is always changing also. So what happens at the time of death is that we simply change into another body. The person remains the same. The child of 20 years ago is now the grown-up person of today, but it is the same person. So what is the constant factor? If the body is always changing and the mind is always changing, what is the constant factor? That constant factor is something which is different from the mind and the body. And what is that? Krishna explains. That is the soul. Vasamsi jirnani yata vihaya nirvani gunanti niroparani tata shirani vihani what is that? Tata? Tatani shira? No, I lost the verse. Anyway, Krishna says that just like we have old clothes, we give them up. When they're old, and we put on new ones. So in the same way, when our body becomes old and worn out, we give it up and get a new one. So it's not a very difficult thing to understand, 
But because we are in illusion, mostly we don't even think about this. Mostly we think only how I can satisfy the body. So someone who is very intelligent in discrimination, he can understand that we are not this body, but generally that has to be told to us. But then even if we logically understand we are not this body, still we need to be told what we are. Just like Sanatana Goswami, he inquired from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that who am I, what is my duty? So practically his questions, uh, they began at the point of um, understanding, I am not this body. He said, who am I? That means, he, of course, he knew that what his material identification is, but he wanted to know, actually, who am I? That means he knew, practically, he was the soul, but what is the identification of the soul? What are the activities of the soul in liberation? So I think Swami asked, who am I? Previously he had been a minister in the government of the, of the ruler of Bengal. Now he was in the liberated position. He was liberated from his material entanglements and he had only to engage in the service of Krishna. But now what, what should I do now? After, in other words, his question was that after liberation, what is our duty? What should we do? The Mayavadis, they think that when we are liberated, everything finishes. We have nothing to do. But in devotional service, there are many activities. So what should we do in the liberated state? What is our duty, having become liberated from material life? So that was taught by Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to Sanatana Goswami. And Sanatana Goswami subsequently taught that to all generations following of Gorya Vaishnavas by recording that in his books. So this is the process, to hear about Krishna, by which people become happy. No one is happy in this material world. That we should be convinced of. Not by brainwashing ourselves, but by factually understanding. No one is happy. Even if they appear to be happy, because that is the propaganda of this material world. You have to appear happy. Everyone has to look happy. In America they say, be cool. Cool means just kind of show that you are happy. Here in Gujarat also, there's, people are generally well behaved compared to other parts of India and other parts of the world also. People tend to deal with each other quite politely and people appear to be quite materially happy. They're fairly prosperous and uh, they're they tend to be quite well educated and pious. So they appear to be quite happy. But actually, as much as people are not engaged in the service of Krishna, they cannot be happy. We should be sure of that. Even the so-called, this so-called being nice, smile, be happy, be kind to others, all these things which are going on in the material world, it's simply some arrangement for mutual sense gratification. Everyone is full of anxiety. And if they're not, if they're not full of anxiety, if they're not overtly full of anxiety, that's simply because they're in very deep illusion. If they actually, if, if someone feels, if they've programmed themselves to feel that yes, I'm quite content, everything is nice, and they're in a great illusion because they have to die. They may think I'm very comfortable, in my nice position, but you have to leave that position. And where will you go? I don't know. At the time of death, you say, he has gone away. So and so has gone away. But where is he gone? That they cannot say. They will say, he's gone to heaven. He's gone to God. When, when John Lennon was shot, his, they asked his son, where do you think it, it, he was a child at the time? Where's your father come? He has become one with God. He has become God. That's what they think. So everyone thinks, I'm going, those are little pious, they think I'm going to heaven, or I'm going to God. They just presume I must be going to heaven. But there's no guarantee. 
that they're going to heaven. Most likely, everyone nowadays, they're engaged in sinful activities, either directly or indirectly. Everyone is engaged in some sinful activity. No one is engaging in pious activities. So, uh, people, their future is not very bright. They say about a student, if someone is a good student, they say he has got a bright future. That means if he goes on working, he can eventually get a job in which he'll earn some money and work like an ass, and he'll have a respectable position in society. Respectable ass. He has a bright future as a highly respectable ass. But how bright is your future? Even if you become a doctor or an engineer or something highly respectable like that, or even if you go to America, you still have to die. So your future is not so bright. It may look bright for a short time, but it's bright just like the fireworks. It goes brightly in the sky, makes a big noise, and then finished. So bright future means for a few seconds you make a big noise, and very bright, and then finished. So the really bright future is for those who are Krishna conscious, because they are going back home, back to Godhead. Otherwise, everyone's future is very dark. Just like Srila Prabhupada, he was on one television program, and they asked him, according to your philosophy, what happens to people who do not become Krishna conscious? Prabhupada said, they all become cats and dogs. So that is the fact. It is not a very bright future. Of course, Prabhupada was often telling this because he was preaching among the hippies who were living like animals. I mean, everyone's living like an animal, but they didn't keep any cover on it. They just, just openly living like animals. So Prabhupada was preaching that if you live like this, you will become a dog. So once a hippie said to Prabhupada, well, what's wrong with becoming a dog? Prabhupada said, you have my blessings. <laughs> People, they are so much in illusion, they think, it may be very nice to become a dog. Of course, in India, the dog, they have a, an overtly miserable existence. But in the West, the dog is man's best friend. And they are considered the best friend of the family. They are looked after very nicely. And people feel very upset if their dog dies, which, of course, they do. They don't live forever. I, I, when I was in Russia, I saw there was some... You're waiting at the airport for my bags to come. It took almost as long as the flight for the, bag, for the bags to come. It was a one-hour flight and 45 minutes to get the bags. So they had TV in the waiting room to entertain you while you're waiting for your bags. Very clear screen. They've made very, very good technology these days. Everything is very clear. So they were advertising dog food. And they showed how you can take your dog for a walk and he will run and bound and leap and then he will sit very obediently <laughs> like this, <laughs> looking at you, please give me my dog food, then he will lick you and you will merge into the ocean of doggish bliss <laughs> by seeing your dog eat this dog food. And this is the, what could be better than this? Beyond this, there is no happiness to be achieved, they are thinking, if my dog is happy. If my dog is happy, then I am happy. They are thinking like this. So, they are thinking, it may be very nice to become a dog. This is just some idea of how much illusion they are in. Great illusion. But actually, you cannot be happy. It is, it is not an existential law of the universe that if you feed your dog such and such dog food, that you become merged into the ocean of transcendental bliss. You become free from all anxieties, and you, you are, the hairs of your body stand on end. It does not happen. Simply the dog becomes fatter and fatter. You haven't seen fat dogs in India, only thin dogs. In the West they have so many fat dogs. Fat cats, they can hardly move. Because the people think that I'm so fat, my dog should also be. So, actually we become, the, 
the laws of the universe, if we are to study the laws of the universe, then the cosmic law is Yasmin Tushte Jagat Tushta. If Krishna is satisfied, then the whole world can be satisfied, not anybody else. It is not that by satisfying my wife, I will become satisfied, she will become satisfied, and I will become more satisfied because I'm in illusion, thinking that this is my beautiful wife. But it is not this kind of satisfaction, it is very much uh, temporary and it is not, it doesn't fully satisfy the soul. We have, a, we have a sense of being satisfied that yes, if my children become doctors and engineers, then I will be satisfied and if my wife is happy, then I will be satisfied. So there is a sense of satisfaction, but actually our hearts are burning with fear, illusion and anxiety. This can only be dispelled by becoming Krishna conscious. There is no other way to dispel it. Because all this illusion, all this anxiety has one root cause only and that is forgetfulness of our constitutional position as servitors of Krishna. So all these different plans, people are making plans. I will get my degree, then I will go to America, then I will earn a lot of money. So on the individual basis, we are planning, and on the social, the social basis, there are so many plans, the, maybe some group of Patels or makers get together and they plan, we will make one Patel community hall, uh, and this, this will, this is for the benefit and upliftment of the Patel community, and on a broader basis, the politicians are making plans how we will capture the government. They're all discussing how we can get the government. No one's discussing how the country can be benefited. They're all simply discussing how we can capture the seats. In other countries, they make a show of, we want to benefit the country. But in this country, it's just brazen. We want to benefit ourselves. Vote for me. Why? Because I want you to. I will become the prime minister and I will enjoy it. They're thinking, now they're all thinking, the political parties are all thinking of what's the latest bluff we can say to the people. We, our party stands for stability and our party stands for progress, some empty slogan. So everyone is making plans in different ways, how we will improve our situation. But you cannot improve your situation. Or even if you do, even if, you, even if you're a beggar and you become very rich, just like all... Mostly these big film stars in Bollywood, Amitabh Bachchan and his Mitra and Chakravati, they were beggars practically. And they became big shots. Big, they were skinny like me and now they're all fat like anything. Because they became rupee billionaires by playing the fool on the big screen. So you may improve your situation, but how long for? Even if you become a big film star, there are so many people run away from their village and go to Bollywood thinking that I will be the next Amitabh. In, in America also, so many, they go to Hollywood. Now I can become a big film star. And they might get a job as an extra, that's all. Enough to buy them a cup of coffee. So uh, a few people make it good. So many people want to be, just like now you see, they're all anxious. Who can be the next Prime Minister? But not everyone can be the Prime Minister because the way they change governments, and it's like maybe everybody could be. It's like every six months they have a new Prime Minister. But uh, not everybody can get the job. But even if you do get the job, you won't be satisfied. And it's very, it's very much temporary. You may be Prime Minister today and dog in Sweden tomorrow. Maybe you heard this, one of the Prime Ministers of India, when he died he became a dog in Sweden. And now that body already must have passed away and he's something else now. So even if you do make it to the top, one thing is you won't be satisfied. Another thing is, it's temporary. You see, Prime Minister today, dog tomorrow. Or big business magnate today, worm in stool tomorrow. So what did you gain? 
This is all the illusion of material life. We shall be happy in material life. Now, all this illusion should be cleaned out by hearing about Krishna. You're not this body. You cannot be happy in this body. Whatever you do, however you decorate it with different makeups and perfumes and hairstyles and fashions and jewelry, how and, and however you decorate your designation, F-R-I-C-S, M-A, N-D, M-B, Master of Bakwas. <laughs> All these different designations. You see some people, they give you their card and their name is like one thing and then about six lines, all these different things. That, uh, something like, uh, you may have uh, NPAVV. What is that? I'm a member of the Patel Association of Vala Vidyanaga. <laughs> so, they join all kinds of different organizations just so they can have their name on the car. Uh, HF, what does that mean? Head of the family. So, they become happy by showing their card. Oh, so many things on his name. So however you decorate this body, it will fall down. However you decorate this body, you'll not be happy. You'll not be satisfied. You'll be lamenting, full of illusion. So happiness means there's only one way to be happy, actually. And that is to be Krishna conscious, to understand I'm not the body, I'm the eternal servant of Krishna. So we have to go on hearing, because all the time we're hearing propaganda. You are this body, enjoy. And even if people are not telling, then we ourselves are thinking, well, I could enjoy, why not? I failed before, but I could try again. Why, why not be a hero? And even though I've been defeated so many times, I will try again. This is heroic. Heroic activities of trying to enjoy in this material world and get smashed again and again. So this is not real heroism. Real heroism means to say no to Maya. And my dear Maya Devi, you are a great pure devotee of Krishna. Your job is to keep me in illusion. Kindly persist. Now I'm taking shelter at the lotus feet of Krishna. So that is real heroism. Because Maya is offering us in so many ways. You can be happy like this. You can be happy like that. Why are you following this Krishna consciousness? I'm sorry. I, it's true, I mistreated you before. But don't worry, you come with me now. And I'll, I'll be very nice to you this time. I'll give you all comforts. Just come and why don't you try one more time? There are so many people happy in my embrace. You see, so many people are happy driving fast cars and so many with, now there are new cars coming in India. You couldn't be happy before, there were only ambassadors and fiats. But now you can get Ford cars and all kinds. Now you can be happy. Now is the time to be happy in India because there's so much more facility for material enjoyment. Why don't you come? At least try it out. You're only young. You're only young once, so try, try it out. If it doesn't work, you can go back to Krishna consciousness later. So, so many ways Maya will call, just come with me. But a real hero says, no, I'm surrendering to Krishna. So to become strong in that, we have to hear regularly, again and again and again. We are not this body. We cannot be happy in any way by trying to satisfy this body. That we have to hear. Because we are on the platform of self-interest. We are, we are not on the platform. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is saying, Asvishyava padaratam vinashtuma madashanam namahatam karotu yatapita vavivathati lampata matpranamad just to say vinata. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is saying, Krishna, even if you mistreat me, I will always be interested only in your service. We are not like that. If we don't get prasad on time, or if, if there's uh, someone is snoring or and okay, I've got up and enough. Last, finished. Let's get out of here. So we're not on that platform. We're still on the platform of self interest. So we should know that our self interest is to surrender to Krishna. Nathi Vidu Swatagating Vishnu 
जो राशि ये पंजरा कमाना ये था अंधा ये काम वायु करनी है माना स्थिति से काम करना वो भी धाम नहीं बनता एवरीवन इज सफरिंग इन दिस मटेरियल वर्ल्ड बिकॉज़ दे डू नॉट नो दैट द गोल ऑफ लाइफ इज टू सरेंडर टू विष्णु कृष्णा देयरफॉर दे आर होपिंग अगेंस्ट होप दैट वी शुड बी हैप्पी बट इट इज अ होपलेस होप दे आर वेरी दे आर वेरी होपफुल पीपल बिकॉज़ इवन दो दे आर स्मैश्ड अ मिलियन टाइम्स So like every time you put your head up, you get smashed with a hammer. So that's happened a million times, and you're thinking, "Well, let me try one more time. Maybe I won't get smashed this time." So you again, let me try. Put your head up and again get smashed. So they're in uh, external consciousness, identifying with this body, following blind leaders who promise them material happiness, and simply getting tied up more and more in the illusion of material life. So the devotee. He says, "No, I will surrender to Krishna. I will follow in the footsteps of the great devotees. There are so many great devotees in the past who have got free from this illusion by surrendering to Krishna. Let me do that also by regularly hearing about Krishna, Hari Krishna." Is there any question? Shrimad Bhagavatam ki jai.